A near complete marine reptile fossil dating back 100 million years has been uncovered in outback Queensland. The seven metre long Ichthyosaurus uh, was uncovered in a fossil rich area south of McKinley and scientists say it's about 90% intact. Now, for more on this, I'm joined by Dr Espen Knutsen from the Queensland Museum. A lot of work ahead to prepare this fossil um, for display by hopefully mid next year. What can we expect to see? Well, I've seen it in the field and uh, it looks like you've got nearly a complete head, maybe just missing a little bit of the snout and the entire body, most of the flippers as far as I can tell, and even perhaps the right of the tip of the tail where you get this little bend down at the back of the tail of these things. So it'll be very interesting to see in the next 12 to 18 months what comes out as they remove the rock around it. Yeah, so one of the most complete fossils of its kind, how and where was it found exactly? Yes, yeah, so it's a station, like you said, uh, sort of southeast-ish from McKinlay. So it's uh, inland of, in Queensland where uh, 100 million years ago, this was all covered by a big inland sea, which is why we're finding these marine reptiles that this group belongs to in these areas. And you can see in your pictures here, some of the station owners around that uh, actively go out and, uh, and look for these fossils. And it's thanks to them that uh, we have this amazing skeleton. And tell us about the ichthyosaur. Uh, where did it live? What do we know about its diet, uh, its behaviour, and uh, you know, it's, it's whether it was a predator or had threats there? Yeah, so ichthyosaurs is a very old group, so they sort of evolved about 250 million years ago. And uh, this one that's found here in Queensland is one of the last families or, or, or groups of, of this, these animals before they went extinct roughly around 18, 19 million years ago. So it's very important to, uh, to learn more about these. And obviously, these are like dolphins that are mammals, these are reptiles that whose ancestors lived on land, so they were air breathing. You can see in the imagery, imagery here that they look very dolphin-like, um, but they have uh, still have their little back flippers and they still have a, a tail fluke uh, that was vertical instead of horizontal. And as far as we can tell, a lot of these things were eating fish and squid. But the good thing about this specimen is that it might also have a lot of the stomach content still intact mm -hmm. and even perhaps other things in there like uh, embryos and things because we know from other fossils of these things that they did give birth to uh, lard young as well just like uh, whales do today. Mm. So a lot to learn from this. Um, some might find it odd to have a, a dolphin-like fossil in <laughs> Western Queensland but not so. No definitely not yeah so this is just one of those uh, groups of reptiles that we found swimming around in what is now outback Queensland but 100, 120 million years ago like I mentioned this was a big inland sea so you had turtles, you had crocodiles, you had ichthyosaurs, you had plesiosaurs which are these long necked reptiles with uh, uh, four flippers and you get tons of fish fossils there as well. I just had a bunch of uh, students from James Cook Uni out there and we were founding bivalves or so clams and, and, and fish and, and bits of reptiles like turtles and other things as well. So all the fossils uh, and the rock itself also shows that there was definitely an inland sea covering all that vast area that's now essentially desert and grassland. And, you know, as you pointed out, there's a lot to learn from this. Are you already learning that or does it really take until it's on display in its full form that you get that full picture um, to, you know, advance on what you already know? Well, I think it's very important now that this is uh, prepared in a very uh, gentle and, and, and meticulous fashion, as, as they will do. And in particular, because previously it was about getting to the bones, see the bones, but more and more paleontologists realise that there are other things that we might stumble upon on the way in through the rock and that might, might be soft tissues from the animal itself and then it could be stomach content as well so it's very important to look for all those clues within the rock that might tell us a lot about uh, the physiology and the ecology of the animal rather than just the skeletal anatomy. And how many more fossils do you think are out there? Is there a treasure trove waiting? <laughs> Oh, definitely. I think it's just a matter of uh, boots on the ground. I think there's probably thousands and thousands of skeletons weathering out from the rocks as we speak. And uh, we've got so many huge stations out there. And if we can just get on those and, uh, and, and look and prospect, I'm sure there's plenty more out there.